What's up, YouTube? My name is Big Boy Snacks on TV. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And tonight I'll go on my AEW Dynamite review on highlights. So if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys please pull watch the video from the beginning to the end. Hit that like button, subscribe to my channel for more wrestling content like this. Follow my social media down below in the description. And go check out my WWE NXT review on highlights that I posted yesterday on the channel. Go watch that full video and show some love. And that's all I gotta say. Alright. AEW Dynamite was a solid show, and I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Now, AEW Dynamite was live from Salt Lake City, West Valley City, Utah, Maverick Center. We opened up we opened up with a recap of John Moxley's message to AEW promising to burn down the forest and to plant a new one and claiming everyone works for him now. When then see we then see the chaos and damage that Black Pool Comic Club have caused since the struggle of those opposing them to stay united. We also see John Mozzie and crew in the in the desert promising this is all for the greater good. We cut to the parking lot of the Mar Maverick Center as a group of AEW super AEW wrestlers awaits the arrival of the Blackpool Comic Club before heading to ringside to get the show started with the rundown of what's to come tonight. Video package. Chaos involving Kip Saban and Hangman Adam Page led to Christian Cage pick up a win over Jay White last week. We head to the ring where Tony Siobhan introduced Page for some words on what has been going on. Hangman Page uh, makes his way to the ring as Tony asks him where his mind at after the past couple weeks. Paige grabs the, grabs the mic from Tony Siobhan and talks about the damage he caused to Bang Bang Gang until Colton Gunn blindsides him. Um, he sends Paige to the outside, but Hangman fights back as he sends Gun Colton Gunn towards the ring apron. He sends Colton inside the ring, taking off his belt to continue to be continue to beat down until the gang make their way down the ramp for the save. They circled the ring before going after Hangman Page, who quickly makes his escape as he limps up the ramp. Jay White grabs the mic, telling Hangman Page he can't hide and they and that he will always have the Hangman's page number. Um, Hangman Page can't hide can't hide behind all the blood and barbed wire he wants, but but when that bell rings. He will always he will always come up short against the switchblade. If you're not down with that, we he got two words for you. Guns up. This was a good opening to the to AEW Dynamite. Good opening here between the recast and the confrontation between the Bang Bang Gang and Hangman Adam Page. Really interesting to see this turns in the story after Hangman Page rivalry was worth strictly hashtag AEW Dynamite. We get a graphic hyping up our opening contest and and then a video package. Sammy Guerrero's career in AEW is is so is so far in his recent return to action that sees him facing one of the best in Shelton Benjamin tonight. Um, Shelton Benjamin and MVP talk about bi the business they're they're in being mentioned uh, merchants of mystery. And misery and looking to take over. There's trust the process. They've done it before and they'll do it again. Back at ringside, Sammy Guevara makes his way to the ring for our open contest. Opening contest out next is Shelton Benjamin, and this match is on the way. So we get Ring of Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champion Sammy Guevara versus Shelton Benjamin, and this and this was a really good match, man. I I enjoy this match. Shelton Benjamin goes on the attack earlier, hosting Sammy Guerrero up high to send him into the map before bringing the champ into the corner to continue the beatdown. With MVP looking on with some advice, Shelton Benjamin continues to work on Sammy Guerrero until he gets sent into the road. So, so only for Shelton Benjamin to block a cutter attempt. The action soon spills to the outside as Sammy Guerrero catches Sean Benjamin with a kick to the face. Following with a moonsault to take him to the floor, Sammy Guerrero goes goes back in the ring for a dive but is cut off by MVP, allowing Sean Benjamin to catch him and drop him down 
apart as we go to picture and picture. We're back from picture and picture. Shelton Benjamin maintains control of the match, wearing down the former TNT champion with an onslaught of offense around the ring before bringing him back in. He goes to work on Sammy Guerrero, sending him into the corner for further damage before sending him to the ropes as we come back from break. Just as Shelton Benjamin sends Sammy Guerrero to the canvas with a flapjack, Shelton Benjamin drops him again for ad damage, bringing Sammy Guerrero back to his feet for a release German suplex. Sammy Guerrero looks hurt here as he grabs his neck. Shelton Benjamin starting, starting him down, staring him down before bringing Sammy Guerrero to his feet, only for Sammy Guerrero to roll him up for a near fall. Shelton Benjamin, Shelton Benjamin responds with a kick, Heading to the ropes, but Sammy Guerrero catches him with a knees, sending him down to the floor instead. Shelton Benjamin rises to his feet on the outside, just as Sammy Guerrero makes his big makes a big dive, sending him back down hard. Sammy Guerrero brings him back into the ring before leaping off the ropes, but Shelton Benjamin turns it around for a German suplex. Sammy Guerrero lands on his feet, dunking the grabs of Shelton Benjamin for a cutter before slowly getting a cover, leading to a leading to a one count before Shelton Benjamin kicks out. MVP shouts at him to stop playing with your food as Sam Guerrero continues to model some offense in the corner, heading up heading up top before leaping off right into a super kick by Shelton Benjamin. Shelton Benjamin backs up as Sam Guerrero rides to his feet only to take a thirst kick by Shelton Benjamin. Sammy Guerrero ends up in the corner as Shelton Benjamin hits him with a knee strike, followed by a followed by an exploder into a power slam for the win. The winner by pinfall, Shelton Benjamin. This was a really this was a very good match. Very good match right here. I enjoyed this. Really good opening match. Great dynamic here between Shelton Benjamin and Sammy Guerrero. Really enjoyed Sammy Guerrero's heart. Um, hard here, but Shelton Benjamin picks up the win. Backstage, we see Renee Renee trying to get a word from Mariah May, who is seen with a luggage case, luggage case revealing it's it's Anna J as she's as she goes it open against the floor of the hallway. She runs down Anna before the new number one contender confronts her briefly until officials rush in to intervene as we cut as we cut away. Video package: Kyle Fletcher betrays betrayal, betray a Will Ospreay at AEW Wrestle Wrestle Dream, and the promise he will address things tonight on Dynamite. Back at ringside, Tony Schiavone welcomes Kyle Fletcher and Don Callis to the ring. The crowd, the crowd let Don Callis know how they feel about him, as he says Kyle Fletcher is ready to speak. Kyle Fletcher says these people can. Boo all they want, but he only wants to talk to Will Ospreay. He talks about Will Ospreay losing the international championship 11 days ago and the time he's been spending in the hospital to recover, all the while wondering why Kyle, why. And that makes Kyle Fletcher happy. What what the people don't realize is that it's they are just as much to blame at blame as well as Ray is talking up the hype around him being the next big thing when he debuted it. Alright, um Kyle Fletcher is briefly interrupted by a Will Ospreay champ before he addressed Will Ospreay debut in AEW, where folks began to call Kyle Fletcher the next Will Ospreay and he took every comparison as an insult. Kyle Fletcher insists he is better than Will Ospreay in every single way, addressing when he joined the United Empire under Will Ospreay's ring. The crowd chant, wrap it up, to which Kyle Fletcher says Don Kyle's brought all the TV time in the world for him to speak, so they will listen. Kyle Fletcher then talks about why he left New Japan to join AEW, bringing up Will Ospreay's history with Okada and Kenny Omega. Kyle Fletcher saw the writing on the wall uh, and realized what he had to do to get out from Will Ospreay's shadow because that's the lesson Will taught him. 
Don Callis helps Carl Fletcher realize that Will Ospreay is too selfish and lays out a challenge to Will Ospreay to meet him in the in this ring next week. Admits to admits the crowd telling him to shut up. Carl Fletcher promised to send him back to the hospital with Tiger Driver after Tiger Driver proving that he is the one and only Kyle Fletcher. One thing is apparent if Kyle Fletcher wants to wants to stand stand the top stand stand top the amount of AEW he must be nothing like Will Ospreay. With that Kyle Fletcher takes his shirt off as Don Kyle's reveals a hair trimming before handing it to Kyle Fletcher who proceeds to begin shaving his hair off. He proclaims he is nothing like Will Ospreay as we cut away to a video promoting upcoming shows and then to commercial. Interesting segment. Yeah, interesting segment here as Kyle Fletcher justifies his actions at Wrestle Dream and uh, starts shaving his head to prove he's nothing like Will Ospreay. That's a curious angle to take. Look to looking forward to what happened next week though. Hashtag AEW Dynamite. That was an interesting segment by uh, by Kyle Flaster. All right, so we go to commercial break. Kanusuke Takeshka defends the AEW International Championship at Maple Leaf Pro Wrestling debut event, but a post match beatdown was interrupted by the arrival of Ricochet. Now I can say this though, Kanusuke Kanusuke Takeshka is a dog in AEW. He's he's in t- he's one of my top three in AEW, and that's all I gotta say. I'm just putting it out there. Let me continue. Backstage, Ricochet talks to Renee about Kanusuke Takeshka screwing him out of the inter- international title twice before calling him or anyone else out for Rampage. MVP and Shelton Benjamin arrive with MVP offering him a business card and a fresh start before complete. Complimenting him, complimenting him on his entire, uh, entire before walking off. Back at ringside, Lance Archer and Brian Cage head to the ring where their opponents are waste as as this match gets underway. So we get Don the um Don Collins family, Lance Archer and Brian Cage versus local talent. This was a squash match. The man facing Don Collins newest a question is still barely a chance against. Brian Cage and Lance Archer, who dominates both men before a com- combination choke slam slash firebomb gives this newly min- uh, minted team the win. The winner of the match, Lance Archer and Brian Cage. This was a squash match. This the segment with Kyle Fletcher must run so long that we can't even get names for the local talent. Brian Cage and Lance Archer defeated LOL. Wow, hashtag AEW Dynamite. That was a squash match. So we go to commercial break. We cut back to the parking lot where the commemoration pulls themselves away to head inside for the Briscoe match up next. Chuck Taylor has some words for Orange Cassidy before we head back to ringside. All right, Chuck Taylor has some some hard has some hard but encouraging words for Orange Cassidy. As the locker room continues to await the arrival, hashtag AW Dynamite World Champion John Moxley. All right, let's move on. Chris Jericho heads to the ring for our next match, a ladder war match with the Ring of Honor World Championship on the line. While Briscoe heads down the ramp next, charging at the learning tree as this match gets underway. So we get the Ring of Honor World Championship ladder war match. Mark Briscoe defense against Chris Jericho. This was a good match. Good good ladder war match. Mark Briscoe is a man possessed as he lays into Chris Jericho, sending him off the apron and into a table that was set up at ringside before the match per the instant intensity surrounding this match stipulation. Mark Briscoe continues to beat Chris Jericho down until the learning tree turns things around. Sending the champ into the barricade before pulling out another ladder. And Miss Fozzie sucks. Chant from the crowd. This seems to distract Chris Jericho just enough for the champ to turn things around. But Chris Jericho managed to evade a J driller onto the apron. Mark Briscoe isn't finished, however, as he props Jericho onto a ladder set across the apron and barricade. 
Mark Briscoe hits the ropes, looking to dive onto the learning learning tree, who evades at the last second, forcing Mark Briscoe to crash through the ladder instead. Chris Jericho enters the ring with a ladder of his own now, setting it up as he looks to make the climb for the title. But Mark Briscoe intervenes only for the champ to be sent crashing to the mat as we go to picture in picture. We're back from picture in picture. Chris Jericho used the ladder to continue the attack on the champ, wearing him down before setting the ladder up against the nearest Tom Rocco. Chris Jericho attacks Mark Briscoe in the corner, now managing to send the champ into the ladder on the opposite side, busting him open as Chris Jericho leaving the ring for yet another ladder. Mark Briscoe makes it back to his feet. However, laying into the challenger until he sends over the top rope to the outside. Chris Jericho sets the ladder up in the middle of the ring as we come back from, from the break, but is interrupted by the champ who hits him with a death valley driver onto the ladder in the corner instead. Mark Briscoe leaves the ring for another ladder, setting it up over Chris Jericho before climbing the turnbuckle. The challenger catches him in the corner with a ladder sh shot setting it up to confront the champ from the other side as they trade blows until Mark Briscoe tips the ladder over, dropping the learning tree to the mat and then hitting a senton bomb, driving the ladder onto the challenger. Mark Briscoe leaves the ring to pull out a table, but rush up the ladder instead to interrupt Chris Jericho. The two go at it from, a, from the top of the ladder until Mark Briscoe is sent down to the mat by Chris Jericho who reaches for the title up top only to be sent falling into the canvas by the champion. Justify this is awesome chant. Dang it, sorry from the crowd. As both men struggle back to their feet to trade strikes. Chris Jericho sends Mark Briscoe to the corner, but takes a ladder to, to the face by the champ, who then sets up the table and the ring. He props the ladder up near the ropes before putting the learning tree onto the table, climbing the ladder as he looks to cause some more damage until Brian Keith rushed down the ring, was down the ramp. Climb, climbing up climbing up to confront the champ, Ricky Romero, Ro Ro Rocky Romero rushed in, dropping Keith, uh, dropping um, Brian Keith with a candlestick. The two have, the two leave the ring and up the ramp as Mark Briscoe climb up, climbs back up again. And, and connects with the Froggy Bowl that dives Chris Jericho through the table. Mark Briscoe follows up with a J Driller, keeping Jericho down before he climbs the ladder. But but Big Bill is here to intervene. He holds the champion off the ladder, sending him over the top rope with a choke sound that sends Mark Briscoe through a pair of tables on the on the outside. But here's the question: Why did Kyle O'Reilly did not come out doing this match? Why he did not come out to help Mark Briscoe? That's all I gotta say. With the champ down on the outside, Big Bill puts Jericho, Chris Jericho up on his shoulders, allowing the learning tree to reach up and grab the Ring of Honor World Championship. The winner and your new Ring of Honor World Champion, Chris Jericho. This was a good match, but here's an issue: Why did not Why didn't Why did not Kyle Riley come out to help Mark Briscoe? I don't know, but he would. But Kyle Riley was at was backstage watching the whole time. But Kyle Riley should have been out there to help Mark Briscoe. It would make total sense. He would have stopped Big Bill from right there from helping Chris Jericho. That would totally make sense. But this but that was a good match. Alright. Right that right right that was a hell of a ladder match. Hell of hell of a of a ladder war match. I'm really glad we got this on Dynamite. Do I like that Jericho is once again Ring of Honor World Champion? Absolutely not. Do I look forward to seeing who dethrones him as champ ASAP? Absolutely yes. Hashtag AEW Dynamite. After a video package, we cut back to ringside where Adam Cole arrives to st start, up, start up story time. But the Undisputed Kingdom interrupt, talking to Adam Cole about how they are his friends and are supportive of him. Roderick Strong com commands him on his recovery before telling Adam Cole he wants MJF first. Adam Cole says that a says that's a great idea, calling MJF to come face them. 
but MJF gives us a video on the screen as a lady gives him a massage. The former world champion offering a match a full at full gear to whichever of the group to score three victories. We cut back to the ring as Undisputed Kingdom seems to agree with the challenge as we cut to Kyle Riley looking on backstage before going to commercial. That was a decent enough Adam Cole slash Undisputed Kingdom segment. Part of me, indeed, this converse, conversation to happen on screen after the way Adam Cole returned. MJL's challenge regarding full gear feels like his old labors gimmick from years past with a less shiny new paint, paint job. LOL. Hashtag AEW Diamond. That was a decent segment by Adam Cole. All right, let's move on. As quick as a quick aside, Kyle Riley showing up backstage just kind of highlighting for me that the commemoration was largely not present for this match, which felt vulgarly weird considering the segment right before. Hashtag AEW Diamond. So we go to commercial break. Video package. Penelope Ford has returned to AEW with vengeance on her mind and Jamie Hader and her and her sights. Backstage, Jamie Hader addressed Penelope for Penelope for remarks before la- laying out a challenge for next week's AEW Dynamite. We cut to ringside where House of Black makes their way down for our next match. The opponent, their opponents, are in the ring as this match gets underway. House of Black, Brody King, and Buddy Matthews versus Kevin Cole, Jaden Morrow, and and Partura. The Dila Murti. And this tag team match right here, another squash tag team match. We start off with Melka Black facing off against Prat- Prata, who gets the end to the face, sending him, out of, sending him out of the ring, leaving Kevin Cole to go in the ring. Next, Brody King comes, from, comes in for a beatdown on Cole before Jaden mess. Managed to get a tag, but he also takes a beating from the house as Brody, as Bro, but as Buddy Matthews tags in, finishing things off for the house to secure it for security win. The winner of the winner by pinfall of the match, House of Black. This was a squash match. All right, Brody, I mean, not Brody, Buddy Matthews picks up a microphone after the match, calling Adam Cole out. For a match next week, we get a rundown of what's to come next week on Fight Night W, Fight Night Dynamite, before going backstage where Adam Cole is asked about the challenge leading to him confronting Buddy Matthews and the rest of the house of Black who call him too far, too far before walking away. Good trios match for what it was a setup for for the Buddy. For the buddy, uh, buddy Matthews slash Adam Cole match next week. I like the connection with the following segment in which Adam Cole confronts him. Good stuff there. Hashtag AW Dynamite. But that was a squash match. All right, let's move on. Back at ringside, Camille makes her way to the ringside along with Mercedes Monet for our next match. Out, out next is Queen M Amita, Queen Amnada. As this match gets on under, gets underway. All right, so we get Camille versus Queen M M Nada. This was a good match. All right, Camille takes M Nada down early for a one count, but the Queen fights back just as quick to gather to garner a couple of near falls of her own, much to the brick house surprise. She gets back on the offense when M Nada down for. Another near fall as we go to pitcher and pitcher. Back from pitcher and pitcher, Camille continues to wear down M. Nada down, but the queen is soon starting to mount a comeback as we go to a full commercial break. Thanks, TBS commercial break. Back from the break, Camille is back in control. Of M. Nada gets back to her feet for a lariat. She, t- she takes the ropes for a running elbow strike, followed, followed by a snap net breaker. As Mercedes, Mercedes Monet watches on in the concern, 
as well as she's she should be as Aminata hits a running charge at the brick house for a near fall. Aminata locks in a body scissors, which is a botch by the way, but, but Camille managed to counter it into a near fall to force a break. Both women get to their feet now, trading strikes until Camille gets the upper hand as she lifts the queen into the torture rack into a backbreaker. Camille makes the cover, but Aminata managed to kick out. Camille drops her back down, this time picking up the victory in the process. The winner by pinfall, Camille. This was a good match. All right, Camille and Mercedes Monet look to continue to beat down until Chris Stanlina comes in for the save. She stands up to Camille as Mercedes Monet tries to blindside Chris Stanlina to no avail, forcing the double champion and her brick house to escape the ring and go up the ramp. Good match between Aminata, Aminata and Camille. Honestly, made me really appreciate the queen all the, all the more. I'm kind of at about Chris Downer versus Mercedes Monet, though. TBH, we shall see where that goes. Hashtag AW Dynamite. All right, back at, back at the parking lot. The AEW squad is keeping an eye out of an eye out of Black, Blackpool Comic Club when the Pantry arrives. They stare at each other down when Christian Cage sees Kip Sabian chasing him, chasing after him as we cut back to cut back to ringside. The Pantry appear to have their issues with Kip Sabian when we see Hook coming from coming in from backstage saying. The man who attacked his father is the is the ring right now as he rushes down to ringside. He he takes out Nick Wayne before going after Christian Cage, but Kip Sabian intervenes. Christian Cage tells Kip Sabian he he knows why he's been doing what he's been doing, but that stays in the corner so he can deal with him later. But this gives Hook a chance to fight back. The pantry until Kip Sabian intervenes once more, leading leading to Christian K dropping the former FTW champion onto his onto his title shot contender or container with a kill switch. Um, he learns he he leans over Hook, telling him he didn't have the right father to guide him until now. Before the pantry pantry take their leave. All right. Really interesting development involving Hook in the in Patry here. Kip Saban involvement in the idea of, of Christian Cage trying to be a father figure to Hook is one I will keep my eye on. Hashtag AW Dynamite. So we go to commercial break. We head back to ringside for our main event as Private Party and Daniel Garcia make their way to the ring. Out next, Ardell Elite and Jack Perry and the Young Bucks head down the ramp only to be attacked by Daniel Garcia and Pirate Party. The match finally gets on the way, despite Pirate Party being laid out as we get Nicholas Jackson and Zay in the ring. So we get the elite Jack Perry and the Young Bucks versus Daniel Garcia and Pirate Party, Isaiah Cathy and Mark Quinn. This was a good main event match right here. Zay with an early advantage until Matthews tag in. Double team and Zay until Mark Quinn comes in. Dan Garcia joins the fray going after the young bus alongside his teammates as we get a shot out in the parking lot of the AEW squad looking out for the Blackpool Comic Club back in the ring. The elite regain control as Pirate Party goes after Dan Garcia hitting, I mean, Jack Perry goes after Dan Garcia hitting a DDT to the floor while Matthew Jackson hits a shooting star press on Zay as we go to pitcher and pitcher. We're back from picture in picture. The elite maintain control, isolating Zay in the corner as the Young Bucks and Jack Perry alternate tag Matthew Jackson, tags in, tags in for a near fall. Again, angry Jay Garcia to keep the referee distracted while the elite continue to beat down Zay down, beat beat Zay down until he sends Matthew Jackson out of the ring to mount a combat. This doesn't last long as as he is sent to the outside where the elite continues to wear him down. Matthew Jackson sends Zay into the barricade, keeping him down as we come back from break. Stokely halfway can be seen taunting or 
encouraging Jay as Matthews continues the attack until Thomas escapes getting into the ring. Jack Perry stops him from making a tag, only for Jay to break free. But Daniel Garcia is not off the apron before he can tag in. Jack Perry goes for goes after Daniel Garcia on the on the on the outside as the young boys continue to punish Jay with a risky business for a near fall. Um, Thomas is finally able to fend off the elite now, making the tag to a re- returning Mark Quinn, unleashing a fury of offense in the process. Zay is able to tag back in, but, but is soon overwhelmed by the elite for a near fall until Mark Quinn breaks it up. Chaos ensures as Daniel Garcia managed to get out of his predic- predicament while Ma- Matthew Jackson is by Matthew Jackson tags in. A back in the ring, Zay is able to evade a TK driver thanks to Mark Quinn's silly string connects on Matthew Johnson and Zay managed to keep him down for the pin in the win. The winner by pin for Daniel Garcia and Pirate Party, Isaiah Cassie and Mark Quinn. This was a this is a good tag team match. This is a good main event tag team match. Zay gets a microphone challenge the young bus to a to a rematch for the tag for the tag titles. Matthew Jackson and Nicholas Jackson start to decline as they go up the ramp, but Zay offers something more, saying if Private Party can't beat the Young Bucks for the titles, they will split up. The Young Bucks accept the challenge as we get a look at the Blackpool Comic Club truck arriving at the park lot. But it's but it's a ruse. Willow Yule and Claudio Cascanoy blindsides Private Party and Daniel Garcia, leading to a rival. Leading to the rivalry of John Mossy bringing Chuck Taylor to the ring. Claudio wraps a chair around the neck of Chuck Taylor, following John Mossy's instructions to stomp on it as long as Cassie and the others rush down to try to make the save. But but to no avail as the Blackpool Comic Club quickly makes their way out of the ring. Um, Maddox can be seen checking on Chuck Taylor with Orange Cassie looks on as Dynamite comes to a close. Fun, chaotic main event tonight as Private Party in, in particular managed to secure a pinfall win over the Young Bucks in the process, setting up for a one last shot at the titles. Reminds me of but reminds me of the Young Bucks and SCU story from earlier, early AEW, but I hope Private Party doesn't split. Hashtag AEW Dynamite. I do not want to see Pirate Party split up. I do not want to see that. That would be a bad idea. If Pirate Party, Pirate Party will, was managed to split up, I do not want to see that happening. It says absolutely wild, wild end to the, to the, to the night. However, as Blackpool Comic Club make their presence known, sidestepping the contentious in the parking lot to attack Chuck Taylor and sends a message to Orange Cassidy in the park. Popular, popular, down no ending like Wrestle Dream. Who will stop the black? Who will stop the Blackpool Comic Club? Hashtag AEW Dynamite and AEW Dynamite goes off, goes off the air. But overall, a solid edition of AEW Dynamite. Some good matches. The latter war, war match in particular was great. Even if I strongly disliked the result, LOL. And the AEW slash Blackpool Comic Club war rage on. Um, and AEW Dynamite goes off the air. All right, let me give my eyes to what I think about AEW Dynamite. Now, AEW Dynamite was a solid show, and I give it eight point five out of ten. The way that Claudio attacked Chuck Taylor by stuffing the chair onto Chuck Taylor, Orange Cassidy has this look on his face, like this really pissed off look on his face. I have never in my life seen seen Orange Cassidy that mad before. I have never seen Orange Cassidy that mad before, but I know John Moxley brutalized Chuck Taylor. As you can tell by the title of my thumbnail, John Moxley brutalized Chuck Taylor on AEW Dynamite. I know for a fact that Orange Cassidy is getting ready to crash out, cause that look on this, the look on Orange Cassidy's face really says it all. And I cannot wait for next week's show. But man, that was a wild ending to end AEW Dynamite. But I hope Chuck Taylor makes a speedy recovery. Chuck Taylor did not deserve this. I can tell that Orange Cassidy is going to get his get back for Chuck Taylor for what they did to 
for what the Blackpool Comic Club did to Chuck Taylor. I know was, I know Orange Cassidy gonna get his get back for Chuck Taylor. For what the Blackpool Comic Club did to Chuck Taylor. Oh, I cannot wait to see Orange Cassidy crash out and get his get back against Blackpool Combat Club. And that's all I gotta say. But anyway, AEW Dynamite was a solid show, and I give it 8.5 out of 10. If you guys enjoyed my AEW Dynamite review on how please please watch the video from the beginning to the end. Hit that like button, subscribe to my channel for more wrestling content like this, because I'm on the world to 7K subscribers, along with that 3K watch hours. Follow my social media down below in the description. And tomorrow, you guys going to get a double live stream. So, yeah. So, I will be playing Dragon Ball Spark Zero tomorrow. And then, then when I stream for the second time, I will be playing Fortnite as well. So, you guys going to get a double live stream tomorrow. But anyway, I got some errands to run tomorrow. But I will give you guys a double live stream when I get back for my errands. But, like I said before, um, thank you guys so much for taking out your taking the time out of your night just to watch my AEW Dynamite review on highlights. And go check out my WWE NXT review highlights that I post on the, that I post on the channel. And that thumbnail that I post and that, that thumbnail I posted yesterday really says it all. It is up. It is up. And like I said, man, go watch my WWE NXT review highlights from the beginning to the end. Leave a like and comment down below and go show that video some love. And that's all I gotta say from here. But anyway, I will make a YouTube short video, you know what I'm saying, about it. Just to show everybody this to show my thumbnail to everybody, like I always do. So I will make a YouTube short video next after this video. Alright, I want you guys to have a great night. Stay safe and always stay positive. Stay true to yourself. Always believe in yourself. Take your take chase your dreams wherever you want to go. And don't give up and don't let nobody tell you different. I'm not trying to I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Nobody is. Nobody's perfect. Just be the best that you can be. Just keep grinding. And don't stop. Anyway, this your boy, Big Boy Snacks on TV. Have a great night. Stay safe and always stay positive. Kept your crew, kept your kings, kept your club. Too sweet. I'm out of here. Gang. Mwah. Bang. Too sweet. Gang. I'm out of here.